Good morning and welcome to Unity Way Church. Happy Truth Sunday. We are so happy you have joined us this morning as we go forward in our truth service. We will be blessed by your presence and we know you will also be blessed by this service from Unity Way Church. This morning, the Wings of Prayer affirmation is from Daily Word, uh, February the 23rd, 1948. And it is, begin today to put your whole faith in the triumph of good. Again, begin today to put your whole faith in the triumph of good. Just think about that divine idea, the triumph of good. We live in a world without opposites. We live from a fourth dimensional understanding of who we are, which means that both you and I are the Christ. We are the expression of the Godhead, of Elohim God, Jehovah God, Yahweh, all those ancient names, they represent us. They represent us. And because of our recognition of that I am presence, we truly come to express and live the life that we choose to live right here and right now during this incarnation. So I just invite you to take that high ideal, the triumph of spirit. Let it really soak deep, deep within your own soul self. Let it settle there. Be anchored in the truth. Be anchored in this truth that there is only one presence and one power, one life, one substance, one absolute good. And as we consciously allow that oneness, that's the foundation stone of our teachings. It's the foundation of our own soul self. Our life becomes clear. The waters that were muddy now become clear and we can see the direction in which we wish to go forward this day. So let's just breathe that in deeply into us and know that we are the flame of the Holy Spirit indwelling us. We are satisfied. We are triumphant in this understanding. And if you believe that high truth calling, I invite you to use the mantra we use here at our church, which is thank you God, and so it is. Amen. And now here is Mickey with the Daily Word. Good morning. The word for today is energy. The energy of divine life renews me. How do I have the focus to achieve my goals? How do I have the strength to carry on through challenging times? How do I have the aptitude to learn, grow, and change when I'm calling upon to do new things? At the heart of everything I am called to do is the energy to do it. I am a divine being, and I call upon the power of God within me to channel my energy in deliberate ways. Divine energy is inexhaustible. Unlike my muscles, which can tire, and my mind, which can feel frazzled, the power of God within flows through me unimpeded. In prayer, I claim divine energy and imagine it flowing through me and with the force of a mighty waterfall, I am grateful for my renewal. And from Isaiah 40, 30 and 31, even youths will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. And again, the affirmation is the energy of divine life renews me. Thank you. Thank you, Mickey. And what a unique daily word talking about energy, because we're going to be talking about this morning. One of the things I feel is good. Unity to students is the use of energy and laughter and joy, which that leads me to a comic that I have pulled this Sunday. And I know you will enjoy this. This is the scene, a big living room window. It's a picture window and it's outside, as you can see. And the real reason why flies bump into windows, drum roll, is that the flies are taking pictures. They're taking selfies, as you can see in the comic. I love it. 
humor is good for the soul. And we know that to be so. We need joy, we need laughter, we need strength. And of course we know joy, our joy center is related to our strength center, is one of our 12 powers, which is also related to faith, which is uh, the brother of that. Because we need to have faith in the joy that we have, for sure. This morning, I would like to sync up with Sant Unity. We have Myrtle here with us, and she has her beautiful pink mask on, and she's going to per she's going to watch over me, and she's going to walk o watch over the service just to see how we are progressing. Sant Unity, when you're in need, when you're in need for encouragement, when you have something heavy on your heart, you can contact Sant Unity by their 800 number. You can go online to uh, Sant Unity and do a prayer request. Uh, you can also, they have an app you can use. Silent Unity, truly to me, is really one of the beacons of our truth movement. It was a divine idea that was birthed by both Charles and Myrtle Fillmore in 1890. So since 1890, someone has been holding sacred space with the Most High God. And that divine idea was wherever somebody needed to have encouragement, by the law of omnipresence, they would feel that presence that someone is sitting there. And right now back at Unity Village, there's someone sitting in that chair, holding that sacred space in the St. Unity Chapel and also in the St. Unity, which is, on, uh, is, which is in Missouri at Unity Village. 24-7, it's always available to us. And I'd like to sync up with that energy, that divine energy of love and compassion, of joy and laughter of wisdom. And as we feel that, that energy flow into this space right here at Unity Way Church in Vista, we also are connecting also back there. We're showering them with also those gifts of wisdom and love and direction. So all those individuals that are being contacted uh, by one of the workers at Silent Unity, whether by phone or just by the thought, by the divine thought, by telepathy, we know that their prayers are being answered and held in sacredness knowing that they deserve to be answered. And again, we just thank Charles and Myrtle Fillmore for that gift to us, for Unity School of Christianity, that we have that prayer program. We have silent unity. Again, since 1890, someone has been there for us. And they're there right now, as the service is going on this Sunday, holding that space for us and we're holding it for them. And we just say, thank you, God, that that divine idea was birthed and we are still breathing life into that sacred flame. And again, I just say, thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. This is the second Sunday of the month, and uh, the second Sunday of the month, we always recite our, our mission and vision statement. So I'd like to read these statements, and I'd like you to join with me if you would. The mission of Unity Way Church is to empower ourselves and others to grow spiritually by teaching and living unity principles of practical Christianity. And now our vision statement. Unity Way Church is a center where people of all ages come together for healing, prayer, meditation, spiritual growth, education, service, and fellowship. That is who we are, that's what we stand for. And I know Charles and Myrtle Fillmore would be very proud of the statements, both the mission and the vision, because we're true to our roots, that we are truth, we're truth church. We're a true society. We believe in that one presence and one power. And we use that as the anchor and lens for all the activities in our own consciousness and in the world in which we live and move and have our being. And so I just wanted to just say, thank you, God, for these understandings. And may this be the Sunday we put them to the test, our test consciously, that we can live them, be them, and breathe them to the best of our ability. And we just again say, thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. And now it's with my great pleasure to welcome Reverend Ken Fendrick to our lectern this morning. And he has a wonderful lesson in store for you. And I just invite you to shower him with love and blessings. And we are just so happy that we have the ability and the opportunity to work with Ken. So here is Reverend Ken.
Well, thank you, Reverend Michael, and good morning, brothers and sisters at Unity Way Church. And I want to take a moment to wish you a happy St. Patty's Day week. I hope you're wearing your best green because we all know what happens when you're not wearing your green. And enjoy some corned beef or however you might want to celebrate that special holiday this week of honoring the Irish heritage. And in that spirit of St. Patrick's Day, today's talk, we're going to explore the nature of luck. What is good luck? What is bad luck? Why are we lucky? So I'd like to share a few quotes with you that will kick us off in how to luck in your largest life, which is the title of today's talk. This quote is, the amount of good luck coming your way depends on your willingness to act. And that's from Barbara Scherer. From Nesta Jojo Erskine, you don't get lucky while sitting in a sofa with arms crossed doing nothing. You can be lucky only when you are prepared. And this comes from Sally Coslow. Learn to recognize good luck when it's waving at you. Imagine just luck just waving at you going, hey, I'm over here, I'm over here, hoping to get your attention. And you never know what worse luck your bad luck has saved you from. I want to read that again. This comes from Cormac McCarthy. You never know what worse luck your bad luck has saved you from. Wow. What if we thought of bad luck, supposedly bad luck that way? And lastly, from Roald Dahl, we're all a great deal luckier than we realize. We usually get what we want or near enough. So I would like to take this time now and in view of these beautiful quotes we had to really explore the definition and nature of what luck really is. Well, the popular definition from the Webster Dictionary is Luck is a force that seems to operate for good or ill in a person's life, as in shaping circumstances, events, or opportunities. An example of that is, with my luck, I'll probably get pneumonia. But what's interesting about this first little definition is it does line up with our first principle of what God is, right? God is good. God is omnipresent. God is everywhere. And God can either be, God is all good, but it's, it's in the way we view it. So we're going to revisit this as we move on through the talk. The second definition is luck is good fortune. It is advantage or success considered as a result of chance. Now, that's what a lot of people believe luck is. It's just, it's, it's random occurrences. It's not preordained. It's just chance. It's, it's what happens to us. And we're going to look at how unity teaches us that that's not the case. The third definition is a combination of circumstances, events, or etc., operating by chance and bring, to bring good or ill to a person. Again, that aspect of chance and that controls our good luck or our bad luck, our fortunes or our misfortunes. And an example of that is she's had nothing but bad luck all year. And lastly, some object in which good fortune is supposed to depend, as in this rabbit foot says, this rabbit's foot is my luck. And I just invite you to think about that, like how your own superstitions, because one of the definitions of luck, nature of luck is superstition. So how many of you have, I know me personally, when I go around ladders, I never walk underneath a ladder. I don't know why. It's because I learned as a kid, you're not supposed to walk under a ladder. It's bad luck. Or if you break a mirror or all that kind of stuff that's in our, our popular or our our myth mindset of, of the human experience that we've learned through childhood and through stories and fables and, and relatives and, and our cultural, that we carry these things with us and we don't even know. I have to wear my lucky shirt. I used to have to wear my lucky jersey when the Chargers played because if I didn't wear my lucky jersey, they were for sure going to lose. So it's interesting to take a moment and just contemplate that of all the, these little embedded, embedded beliefs we have and and how they affect our, our consciousness and our thoughts, especially on that subconscious level, and we don't even know what's happening half the time. 
So Charles Fillmore has this to say about luck. And this is, this is where we go into the metaphysical meaning now. And this is from the revealing word. All things come about through law. Through law. Humans sometimes blindly keep the law, or part of it for a time, and it works for them. Not understanding the cause that produced the success, the cause that produced this, their success, they call it luck, and build up a belief in chance. Wow, how powerful is that? That I just want to go back to that, because it says all things come about through law, Law, divine law, divine order. We hear those terms all the time. That doesn't sound random to me. Sometimes blindly keep their law a part of it for a time, and it works for them, right? We know those people that are perpetually lucky. They always seem to catch the good breaks. And a lot of times, they're not even aware of it. They just, that's just the way they live. And they might not, be, have, they might not have a spiritual practice, but they just go about their lives and their activities in that knowledge that things are just going to work out for them. Because they don't understand the cause, they just call it luck. Hey, I was just lucky. I had some lucky breaks. And they build up that belief in chance. So let's look deeper into this nature of luck. And we come to a point of people view it as either random chance, like we just talked about, or as we tend to know, divine order. Now, there is that element. One of the elements I would like to discuss real quick is chaos. Because in doing this study, random chance resembles chaos, right? It's, it's that unknown. It's that unpredictable. And we know about chaos, that chaos precedes the great works and the great dreams, the great activities that we're about ready to undertake. And when we consciously declare in our desires, we set divine order in the motion, and those events start ordering according to our desire and our co according to our understanding of God everywhere present, only working towards our good. So here's a reading that comes from truthunity.net, and it comes from one of the, uh, one of the studies, the tracks. Um, that was used to educate uh, LUTs back in the day. And it gives a really good synopsis of the nature of luck. It says, luck implies something that comes to one by chance, as all things in the universe occur in a lawful and orderly sequence. All things occur in the universe in a lawful and orderly sequence. There seems to be little opportunity for luck or accident. Every effect must partake of the nature of its cause. And here's the catcher. Without law and order, the universe would be chaos. The explanation for what is termed luck is a plain to the one who understands the laws of the mind and knows how they work. Wouldn't that kind of sum up what we aspire as true students, right? We recognize that third unity principle, but all activity begins in mind and in our thoughts and in the realm of our thinking. Just as there are specific laws in the domain of electricity, mathematics, chemistry, and the other sciences, so is there specific laws of mind, right? Thoughts and mind produce what's in kind. In the human consciousness, men operate, un men or women operate under the mental law of what is termed cause and effect. That is, whatever the character of the cause that is put into operation, the effect will be like the cause which produce it. Again, cause, the law of cause and effect, right? What we put out comes back to us in the amount we put out. When a human being has what he or she calls good luck, their mind has been conforming to the laws of good. Whether they're conscious of it or not, God, absolute good, can produce only that which is like their own nature. If a person has what terms bad luck, they're allowed. They're allowed through their thoughts to dwell upon failure, sickness, unhappiness, or any other negative belief or condition. In accord with the specific laws of mind, the mental causes that they put into operation produce according to their kind. Like produces like. Again, when we can hold our vision of abundant good as right, our rightful inheritance, 
That's what will be our portion. The good we reap will not be according to luck. The good we reap will not be according to luck, but according to the law. And let that sink in for just a minute. The, the good we reap will not be according to luck, but according to the law. We know divine principle and divine law is is his source is God. It's unchangeable. It's unmutable. It's always there. It's like the laws of mathematics. It's dependable. It's not just random occurrence and something that just pops out, whether good or bad, luck, that happens to us. No, these laws that we activate through our thoughts that build up into a consciousness drive, drive ultimately our good or what we really don't want coming to us. So, how do we align ourselves? How do we align ourselves with the law rather than just chance or luck? This is how we're going to lock in our largest life. So I've come up with a cool little acronym. It's called LUCK. L-U-C-K. And I have a way for you to memorize this. Now, pay attention. Turn up your volumes a little bit. And it's love and understanding and conscious in your creation. And you could actually put B in front of it. B, love and understanding and consciousness and your creation. And the K, I spelled creation with a K. I, I took that liberty. So all my English teachers out there, don't, don't get riled up. I did this deliberately. But, and it'll help you remember it, creation with a K. Again, be love and understanding and conscious in your creation. So let's take a moment and explore these aspects of luck in this, in this format. And the first, L, of course, is love. Love is the driving force, and as we had in our daily word earlier, love is the energy that fuels, fuels our activity. So the, the higher and greater and more love we put into an activity or any kind of endeavor, that's what's going to drive it. The lens or we focus it through is consciousness, is our consciousness. Where are we at in our consciousness that we can, that, that force, that magnifying force of love bubbling up and we can focus that. I think, it, I think if this dynamic is a magnifying glass, and I don't know if you ever is a kid, but we used to take a piece of paper and for fun on the summers, we would get a big magnifying glass and we would hold it up to the sun and we would get it just right between the sun and the paper and it would start burning and that was cool. <laughs> Maybe that was just the thing for boys in those days. <laughs> but anyway, what it, what it says to me is love. Love is that sun coming down. Love is that energy. And the magnifying glass is our consciousness, is that lens we see our life through. So if we see that lens through spiritual truth and spiritual principle and we're aligned with that, guess what? That little beam's going to focus and any endeavor we have is going to is going to just fuel up and it's going to be on fire, on fire, that fire of passion, that fire of energy, that, that, that divine will, right? Our power of will, that 12th power. We have that. Eric Butterworth, the noted unity, unity minister says this, a formula for good fortune essentially and simply is L O V E love. Not the emotional kind of love, and not the love that changes everything dear, but a love in terms of a divine force, which is fundamental in life and the universe, and that you can tune into as you center yourself on and let the energy flow into that force, flow of that force. You tune into it. And how do we do that? I know you all know that. How do we do that? One of the biggest ways is prayer and meditation, right? That's our fourth unity principle. In prayer and meditation, we access this force of divine love that we can channel through and just exponentially focus it and drive what our desire is. So don't look for good luck to change whatever you want. Don't look for some outer fruit, fruit 
fictitious set of circumstances to alter the direction of your good fortune. But get yourself centered in that realization that you, you are one with the true dynamic activity that loves you, that is working for you from within and which wills you only good which is ever seeking it to give you the kingdom of Jesus said, tune in, tune into that consciousness. Center yourself in it regularly through prayer and meditation. Get the feeling that love flows forth from you. Just infuse it, fuse it in all your activities. Divine love is the magnetizer. When we put love into any activity, for instance, some of you may be knitters and create beautiful crafts. And when you knit something for your grandson, granddaughter, or you know, a friend of yours, when you infuse it with love, doesn't it make the process go much more smoother? And the creations you create are magnificent. And then when you give it to the person and you've created this out of love and to see the look of joy on their face and it constantly circulates. So again, love magnetizes it as we put that out in whatever we do, whether it be a job, whether it be something we volunteer for, whether it be an activity or, or anything like that, it brings, it brings things to us that we, that we may desire. We may not even know we desire it, but it brings people to us. It brings resources to it. It brings prosperity to us. All of that comes back to us as we infuse all of our life's activities in love. So now I'd like to come to what the, the you portion is. And the you portion is understanding. And understanding is simply an awareness and a belief in spiritual law. And for all spiritual laws and divine laws, for it to have a direct benefit in our lives, we must believe. And we must believe that there is such a thing and trust it. Because when we trust it, its action becomes unmistakable and recognizable to us. It becomes unmistakable and recognizable to us. We begin to see. We see with new eyes. We see all the blessings around us. So it's not happenstance. It's not luck. We see our goodness, not good fortune, anything like that. No, we just see the good because that's all there really is. That's all there is. It stays a law, rather, it stays a law whether we believe in it or not. But in order for us to connect ourselves and focus, in order, in order for us to connect ourselves directly and consciously with its benefits, we must believe. Believe. Belief is the key. Belief is a form of faith. Noted Unity Minister Ed Rabel goes on to say, these laws such as this one, the law of divine compensation, will work even for a person that doesn't care who doesn't understand, who doesn't believe that the law will still work in them. However, they will not be fully aware of its working and will not fully appreciate it. And that's the benefit of being, that, that's the benefit of being true students, is that awareness, that awareness of these principles, the awareness of when we need to course correct, when our thinking, when our thoughts are kind of moving astray, right? And I, I kind of hit on this in my last talk when I was talking about the shadow, right? It gives us an opportunity to look at things. Like when we're having instances of so-called bad luck or, or these experiences are being attracted to us, that we have an opportunity to gain, this, gain an awareness from it and, and be taught from it. We look at these things because often we have to look at attitudes and emotions. And as I was saying, those, those views on luck and, and, and our lucky little practices or our superstitious you know, uh, beliefs that we have, they're still beliefs. And we need to unpack all those things and begin to look at them. And as we do that, right, and another tool we have to use is denials and affirmations for these individually. We can deny the power it has over us and then assert an affirmation that we are children of God and worthy 
of every good, all the good that is available to us, not depending on happenstance or chance or lots or anything like that. No, we know that good is there and we can see it. We can see the opportunities in front of us. We can see the chances, the, the opportunities for connection and relationships and, and building finances and creating creating greater peace in our communities and on the earth. We have all that available to us. So when we begin to appreciate, the person who, who's not fully appreciative will attribute it to things like luck. I was just lucky this time, or it was bad luck, or therefore we'll not, we'll not function in conscious awareness of the spiritual law, even though spiritual law is much is much working in their life. So the C, the big C as I like to call it, and it's not what we normally call the big C, this is consciousness. And I want you to highlight this. If you're taking notes, I want you to highlight this and put a star next to it. Consciousness. Consciousness is the basis for all of this. This is where our thoughts accumulate, right? Our thoughts over time. Our thoughts build this consciousness. They're like bricks. They're like bricks in a building. They're foundational. So all our thoughts, if we hold true thoughts and we hold thoughts of positive thoughts and affirmative thoughts, those thoughts build that foundation for our goodness. If we consistently hold negative thoughts, and granted, these may not always be conscious. These may be activating these beliefs, these, these thoughts that lead to beliefs may be activating in our subconscious mind and driving our behaviors or driving how we act out of this. So the consciousness is so huge. And this comes from, this comes from Eric Butterworth. Life is consciousness. You can't get away from it. The conditions, the environment, the events in your life are all results of consciousness. Again, life is consciousness. And consciousness manifests and expresses in the formative power of thought and mind and man's mind as they are now constituted and they operate in three general modes. The mode of thought that is the actual character and type of thought that we generate and express and also modes of thoughts in the mental states. And the third, and the most important, and most frequently overlooked, is our persistent attitudes. Persistent attitudes. It's not just the random thoughts, right, that bring about our, our good, or activate our good, or activate the negative things that happen to us. But it's those thoughts that lead to the building, those bricks, of the persistent attitudes. So, we can weave a pattern of success by building into our consciousness the things that make for success. Turn on the green lights, as they say. You can succeed only if you really want to. And you work at it, and you let the light of your God self shine in and through you, and work for balance and positive thinking and positive action in faith and in works. In faith and in works. We'll get to that in a minute. If we faith in it works, the praying and the moving of our feet, in praying, we think big and expand our horizon and keep it open. We keep an open mind. So, you're ever one with that infinite internal energy in which all things proceed. So we keep our mind open and alert to the guidance to new ideas and to new successes. We'll begin to reflect the presence of a pattern of success. Again, you will reflect the pattern of a presence of success. Wow. Wow. And that will be an influence to bring fulfillment and affluence and prosperity to everything you do. God bless Eric Butterworth. What a true luminary and visionary. And lastly, the K. The K, and again, I substituted a K for a C, is creation. Creation with a K. And that goes with that fourth, the fifth unity principle, that it's not enough to know, it's not enough to know these things, it's not enough to recognize divine laws or be open to them, but we need to put our lives in our, act we need to be in motion, we need to be in activity, we need to be building on these precepts, the activity and infusing love in all these things. 
we have an awareness of our value, right? We, we're valuable creations in the sight of God, and everything we do is valuable. We are persons of great value. So, in our creation, number one, creation has two different meanings. It means creations as us, we are unique and loved creations of the whole, but then it's also how we express. We express in creation. We're always creating something. So when using these dynamics and recognizing that, that there's only one presence and one power and only good active in our lives through our thoughts, again, here's going back to the five principles, which I will be teaching a class on in the beginning of April, just a quick plug with that. But the five principles weaving their way through this, we recognize God is source and only good. We recognize that we have that divinity in us. We have that power and, and the ability to activate and focus our love. And through our thoughts, our conscious thoughts, we, we build up, we, we build that power and that presence and that persistence. We build that foundation. And then with prayer and meditation, we activate. We activate that connection with source and that divine love. And then we move forward in activity. We bring it out. We bring it forth into the world. So whatever you desire to do, take the smallest action to activate that. You want to write a book? Start with the first word. You want health and mobility? Begin with the first step or the last bite. <laughs> Anything you want, begin with that mustard seed, that grain with mustard seed, creation. So to sum all this up in closing, I would like to leave you with this beautiful quote. Oh, I don't know if it's a quote. It's more of a prayer. It's from Eric Butterworth. And it's, it says, I invite you to just close your eyes for a moment if you feel so called. Get comfortable in your seat and open your ears to these words and let the spirit within you discern or move that gift of God within you. And it goes, I am the most important person to God for I am his living enterprise. God is not off somewhere in space where I must strain to reach him and get him to work for a miracle. For me, if I am lucky, God is on my side. He has staken me. He is not someone to reach for, but a presence to accept. As Walt Whitman sings, henceforth, I ask not for good fortune, but I myself am a good fortune. Thank you, and namaste. You may open your eyes now and rejoin us. Thank you, Reverend Ken, for a powerful lesson that is truly where we are. We all need good fortune, especially Unity style, that's for sure. This is the time in our service where we have the opportunity to share our love offerings, our gifts, and our tithes. I invite you to take whatever your gift may be and think of it as energy. You're giving energy of yourself. And we're going to be invoking the law through tithing, our practice and love offering. We're invoking the law of cause and effect, which Reverend Ken spoke about. This is the foundation of what we are here at Unity. We tithe back to where we're spiritually fed, which means uh, Unity Village, uh, Unity Worldwide Ministries, Unity Urban Ministerial School, the Unity Institute, Silent Unity, Daily Word, Unity Magazine. Also, um, the original Founders Church, uh, where, the un uh, where the Fillmore started teaching, 913 Tracy. We know that it goes forth to bless those individuals, those teachings that we believe. And we know that energy will bless them and they tithe back into this universe. And it comes back to us as a church. And again, because we're a tithing church, we believe in tithing. It's, it's a way you're in partnership with this loving, good presence. And as the uh, Daily Word said, the triumph of good. So I'd like to seal whatever this gift is, whether you go to unityway.com, you can do an electronic donation, or you can go to unitydayway.com and get our, 
a physical address, but whatever it is, think of this, this, the good energy within this gift, and you're releasing it with the attitude of absolute joy and blessings, knowing that it blesses you, it blesses Unity Way Church, it blesses uh, the Unity Movement, and it keeps coming back to not only us, but it showers over this entire universe. That's a lot, but let's breathe into that truth as we say our blessing. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I give and all that I receive. And we just say, thank you, God. Thank you for the opportunity that we can give. We can give of ourself and give our, of our energy and really demonstrate this presence within our own life. Thank you, God. And now it's our uh, time for our prayer of protection. And I always like to think of the prayer of protection is really a prospering prayer for us also. Because the light, the love, the power, the presence, wherever we are, we're always being prospered with blessings. So as we say this prayer, I invite you to think of yourself, uh, any situation that you're in, your family or loved ones, really our country, the world, the, uh, anything that may be troubling you or your heart right now, just release it to this prayer and let the prospering power of absolute good truly materialize in that situation and in your life. That's the power of prayer. And if you join me, please. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. We are the Christ. We truly are here to be the Christ. Let's demonstrate that truth. And let, let us live in abundance. Let us live in the abundance that this universe wants to shower on each and every one of us. We will see you next Sunday here uh, at this YouTube channel and just have a blessed Sunday, have a prospering Sunday, and just remember how blessed you are because you are indeed a repeatable, prosperous Christ. Thank you and God bless.